Alright, strap yourselves in, fellas. We are in for a bit of a rocky time, uh, because we've got <laughs> terrible, uh, gaming downer stories. Let's dive into it. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the B&R stream today on this fine 26th of August, 2024. I hope you're having a wonderful week and we'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. Um, it is yet another week where I say, oh, it's been a lot of work, but legitimately it has been a crazy amount of work uh, in the personal life. So uh, we're going to avoid all that discussions, but I feel I feel like I've gotten a lot of real good knowledge and I've played through a bunch of fun experiences this week. So I'll have a lot of stuff to talk about as well for that. Um, but yeah, no, I hope you've had a wonderful week. Uh, you know, the past week, yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this. Let's just dive into the game before I keep rambling on forever. I realize as well, I actually do get a lot of people who click on my videos. I apologize so much for uh, rambling at the beginning. But unfortunately, most people are different people clicking on different videos. So if you're here, hi, hello, please stay on. I, I, I don't know. You don't have to, but I, I, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> Check it out. It's Duke Nukem 3D. We are now playing the... F mm, well, it's not the first officially licensed expansion. Um, but uh, Duke... This is Duke It Out in DC. That is the sort of sloppiest title uh, we've seen yet for a Duke Nukem... Well, actually, no, because the Duke Zone... Uh, that we just played through last week, um, was basically just a level pack. But it was officially licensed original levels for Duke Nukem 3D, and therefore it deserved to be played somewhat. Duke It Out in DC is considered by many to be the actual first expansion for the game, uh, consisting of e it's either 10 or 11. I think it's 10, actually even better. We can, we can verify in the user map. It is probably 10. They've declared this one to be Duke DC SL, probably for secret level. And we've got 10 levels going on here. Uh, Duke Down DC replaces episode 3. Um, I don't really know why in particular episode 3. Different expansions replace different levels. Um, but Duke Down in DC generally looks a lot like Duke Nukem 3D. But you'll see some original elements actually start to creep in. And uh, we'll, play on, we'll play on Come Get Some, but generally as well. And we'll do a... We'll do a this is, it's Cor Corey doesn't have a E in it. Corey in the house. There you go. That's right, I'm in the house. <coughs> um, but yeah, Duke and DC generally is considered to be the best of the three expansions. And, uh, I think the reason why that is because the level design is real top-notch. Um, like, I mean, you got this really nice, like, front face to the White House right here. Uh, and generally, it's the fairest with uh, its items and enemy spawns. It's not too over the top. You're gonna you're gonna have some you know some things going on. Uh, you also do have some original music tracks, which is nice. Uh, but we'll we'll go through each level and uh, we'll we'll see what's in for us. I'm only expecting to play through this expansion the stream. I don't imagine um, next week we'll do the uh, the the nuclear winter. Uh, expansion and I recently replayed most of that and I went oh boy this is short so I think it's going to be a double featurette next week for the two remaining expansions um but this one I think is going to take its own stream uh you know in two hours time we'll tell if I'm right or wrong on that one um I like this metal detector going on here um, as well as, uh, I've never, okay, real talk, I, real talk, I've never been to DC. Real talk, guys, I've never been to the DC. I've never been inside the White House. Also, excuse me, that's, that's a bit cruel. Is that, is that a, can you, can you, yeah, oh, that's cruel, that is cruel, come on, guys. Um, cool. very nice as well. <sighs> Walls that you can walk through, but you can't shoot, sorry. That you can shoot through, but you can't walk through. Nice, by the way. There are going to be some original lines of dialogue in some of these expansions as well, which is very nice. Um, hey, at least we got the, the med kit going on there. Also, uh, yes, we are still at the Earth Defense Forces meeting, because uh, if you can reuse some textures, why not? Uh, but obviously, that's uh, an original texture up there. And you'll probably see some other ones uh, floating around. 
Um, I think this fits really, really nicely because Duke Nukem is a very American game. And, and I, I say that with, uh, you know, the, the benefits that come with a very American game. America has a lot of very iconic architecture and infrastructure. Like, look at this, like, I was gonna say, is this the Oval Office? No, it's, it's circular. Also, it's not an office. It's a, it's a lobby, kind of. Hail to the king, but there's something baby. real nice about a lot of the, mm. the architecture of this expansion. Mm. Got this palm reader. I don't even think that's using an original texture. I think that's just a real cool thing. This looks more like an old office. Um. I'm watching my health, don't worry. I'm not gonna crop it. Ooh, you see that up there? Wah. Can I get it? Probably not like this, but keep an eye out for that. Uh, I think I've taken this awkward side route, so we'll preserve my health from a drop and just walk out the usual way. Grab some armor while I'm at it. What an interesting doorway there. Um, but yeah, Oh, I guess that's the Oval Office, ain't it? Well, we do have a little side door as well on this uh, side, so... Or at least it was the windows which I jumped into, and then I proceeded to not open that door. <laughs> hey, you're all just chilling at the corner there. Come get some. Everyone likes. Everyone likes secrets hiding in the. Come on, come on, come down. Uh, everyone likes secrets hiding in here. There you go. Um. Groovy. But yeah, okay. So we got a we got a couple of topics. Uh, this this week, um, and I'm probably going to mention the first one is, uh, there's a, uh, a very, very brand new Did You Know Gaming episode, uh, a very long one as well, it's about an hour 12, an hour 13 or so, uh, it's a long watch, so strap yourself in if you watch it, uh, but it basically talks about Crash Bandicoot 5 and the Toys for Bob studio and it's sort of its, uh, general trajectory around the time of... You know, Skylanders over Hail to, to Crash, uh, the Insane Trilogy, which granted, that was driven by Vicarious uh, Visions, but a lot of those at Activision Studios, uh, you know, they pick up on projects that are, you know, you know desirable uh, in Activision. Um, plus as well, they've got a decent close uh, partnership with Vicarious Visions anyway, so that's all fine for them. Um, oh, I don't know. That's not good on my health, eh? is it? We're gonna take it the old-fashioned way. The old-fashioned way. Just know where the enemies are and pop them off. Um, most importantly, though, the 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 important steps is uh, right around when they uh, had a bit of a. I don't want to say a rush job, because that sounds like they did a poor job, but it was... Oh, that was a staircase here the whole time. Um, but they definitely had a very short kind of schedule to do a, uh, a Spyro remaster, so that ended up being the Spyro Reignited Trilogy. Um, lots of their work ended up being uh, outsourced, so animations and art. Uh, Activision had some real serious layoffs around that time. Um, and then... And we're looking for a key card, by the way, so keep your eyes peeled in case you see it somewhere. Where is it? Let's see, we need a blue key card and a red key card, and I've wandered around so much of this, and we haven't yet seen a blue or a red key card. We've seen the slots. We've got the front of the office here. We've had these other rooms. You think it would be lying out somewhere or hide in the hide in the hallway or something? Maybe in the Oval Office itself. What are we looking at here? It's just a salad. Cool. Salad, yeah, okay. Uh, am I going insane? No, because I should have I should have noticed the restricted area over here and not. Oh. You know how this goes. And the Half Life uh, have a very similar. Oh my gosh, every time. Half Life had a very similar break open the, the door kind of thing, and this is back where the keycard is. Sorry, the, the, the scanner, not the keycard, we still haven't done that yet. Um, 
after the uh, Spyro Reignited Trilogy, they wanted to work on a Crash Bandicoot game, and there was sort of uh, an opening for that. Vicarious Visions were slated to continue work on a uh, Call of Duty. Oh, that's a drop and a half. Uh, they were slated to work on Call of Duty content, um, uh, and uh, that left for an opening to go, hey, you know, we can continue a Crash franchise. Uh, and they sort of uh, had uh, this on and off project over the years uh, involving a uh, multiplayer crash platformer game in which case uh, teams would collect Wumpa fruit and uh, try to cash them in or score them in somewhere. Um, you have different characters with different abilities and uh, generally the stages would be um, some curious mixes of... Uh, uh, different crash ideas they had. Lots of original stuff. All this route just to get a blue key card. And now we're going to backtrack and, uh... Perhaps we may not see, uh... Any enemies on the way back. That's okay. I like the long wanders, but... Very long, long lift. Where'd that guy even come from? Alright. Well, at least we have a... Yep, I was thinking the blue key card was the close one. Hey! Oh snap! It actually is an oval. Whoa! Very nice, by the way. Well, that's a fun sound, isn't it? Um, but yeah, so that all sort of happened, or they were sort of developing this. Um, in the middle, though, they sort of got the green line on just making a Crash Bandicoot four. It seemed like it was a uh, about time. Oh, that was a... Not too sure what's going on there, but I picked up a red key card. I think that's sort of the goal for that part. So let's go down and we'll probably be finishing the level real soon, wouldn't we? Hi hey there. Hope you're having a good day. Then you just wander into the next area. I don't imagine the District of Columbia is a very large district. It's not even a state. Rockin. In memorial. Come get some. Oh. <laughs> some stuff. Isn't that where Spider-Man was? That's that's all I know. Isn't that weird that like Spider-Man left New York? That brief moment. Well by uh, space invaders in the sky. I, I know I have to pause to line up my shots, I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, uh, they eventually did work on a Crash Bandicoot 4 using a lot of ideas and sort of still a bunch of outsourced, uh, or contracted rather is the, the more formal phrase. Um, uh, you know, artists and other kinds of uh, employees. Um, that seemed alright, and Crash 4 did pretty alright, but it didn't meet Activision's sales targets, and one point that they make in the video is Crash Bandicoot, or well, they uh, they have digital sales um, per month, like, and uh, Crash Bandicoot Reignited Trilogy, Reignited? The Insane Trilogy launched on the 31st of its month, and it came out with about 500,000 uh, unit sales digitally. Um, in that first day, basically, because that was at the end of the month. Meanwhile, Crash 4 launched on the second of its month, um, and uh, it only sold about 400,000. It ended up selling a good number of millions, but not enough to, you know, really tell Activision it's a fast seller, and they weren't too confident on it, and sort of any ideas they had kind of got scrapped. Um, I love the build engine Abraham Lincoln can't hurt you. Is it Abraham Lincoln or George Washington who's meant to be sitting here? I think it's the Washington Monument at the... yeah. Whoops. Sorry, fellas. I don't know my America. I love this structure, though. And this, uh... Greek. Is it meant to be Greek at the back of this? I don't know Greek. Or rather, I... I, I, I can read it out loud, like you got lambdas and watch out for the H's, the eaters. Not too sure what's going on there. Okay. <laughs> Enough reading Greek. Oh, look, it's the same thing. Oh, look, it's the same thing. Good 
a thing as a US government personnel only. Very nice. Like a little ticket gate. That's fun though. There's something fun about this uh, architecture. You know what I mean? Also, we got a... Very nice. Oh my goodness. It's a bit of a drop. Come on, we're gonna have a guy? Yeah! You gotta have a guy sitting on the toilet every time. Uh, mm, so close. This is actually, this is really weird because like... Oh, he wasn't there a moment ago. You watched that, I watched that happen. Um, this is a little weird because it's like... I can kind of tell what's happening. You can see the back of the wall in the mirror. It's a bit weird why it's happening over that same over in that direction. Not sure what's going on there, but okay. Everyone likes it. Oh, hi there. All for the yellow key card. Ooh. I think you're going to have a few moments as well where uh, your key cards are not, uh, not utilized or utilized only for secrets. Uh, but yeah, Crash 4 didn't do quite as good as Activision wanted, despite it looking like it would have done pretty alright by most people's standards, so... Or at least, you know, we're not Activision and they probably know more as well. I'm not gonna, like... A lot of what happens in the video makes sense if... I mean, well, if, you, if, you, if you make out like a... Oh my gosh, hello. Okay, that wasn't me. Um, a lot of stuff in the video makes sense. I wouldn't exactly say it is good, but it makes sense why an executive like leans towards those kinds of decisions. Uh, albeit, it also does rely on they have to kind of you know, treat their employees like a bit of disposable fodder, which is more and more. Um, uh, the crash... They had ideas for a crash five. It was sort of... Mm, briefly worked on internally, but it never really got off the ground. Um, and, uh, the studio sort of went off through, you know, a bit of a Call of Duty phase. And a lot of employees were very, very disgruntled around that time. Uh, leading to kind of layoffs and other kinds of just, hey, you know, I don't feel hopeful, I'm just leaving, that kind of stuff. Um, this, uh, then, I don't really know how, but, uh, eventually, uh, the title Crash Team Rumble, a uh, 4v4 multiplayer shooter, mostly reusing a lot of assets from Crash uh, Crash 4, ended up being uh, being conceptualized and eventually made, and it was... I mean, it's... Oh, okay. Um, it ended up being conceptualized and eventually made. Um, sort of had a lot of new contractors going on as well. Oh, that's cool. I want it. I want it. Uh, but eventually, at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people won. Myself included. I don't know if I actually commented on this. Um, it would have been announced at the end of 2022 at the Game Awards. Very Spyro 2 kind of, kind of moment right there as well. That? Oh, I see what's going on here. Oh, okay. All right, we're gonna have to go quick on this one. Uh, shotgun just so it shoots accurately. Get through all three doors quick. There we go. Oh boy, I wonder what happens if I just uh, casually jump in here. Ah! <laughs> well, it didn't launch me quite off the edge, but okay. I'll just blow up the lady. Because for some reason, lots of these uh, Duke Nukem expansions don't uh, link up the, um, the the trapped women with uh, enemy spawns. So you can sort of get away with it. It's a bit interesting. Uh, is this also a, a way back? There's a way back. Yeah, we had the store open. There you go. What a, what a curious little path back. Okay. It does count as a secret. The level's only secret. Uh... Where is it? 
This is actually a curious outro as well, isn't it? Yeah, hang on, wait a minute. I don't remember off the top of my head if the level was meant to end right there, but it's the question begs, why am I here? Should I be grabbing something on my way out, or I just I just leave? Is that all a fun little side area for the blue key card, or I should I activate that for a red key card? Oh, check that out. Danger. Ah. Very nice way to loop back to the beginning as well. And we don't have anything too big chilling out near here. Um, but yeah, eventually those ideas manifested in the uh, Crash Team Rumble. But unfortunately, and they did a survey as well, Crash Team Rumble flopped hard. Lots of journalists at the time, I'm not sure if I opined at the time, but I looked at it and I went, it doesn't really make sense for me to buy. Like. It's not my cup of tea. I'm not a multiplayer guy, I'm not a live service kind of guy. Um, so seeing a live service game, that's just like a big no-no for me. I'm like, nah, I'm not, I'm not dealing with that. Okay, I guess we're... sorry for the <laughs> flashing. Um, where was the red? Was the red around the outside or...? No, but we're chilling with a red key card. We've got to find a home for it somewhere. The, the lift seems quite, like, suspect, but I could just imagine that's just there. It doesn't really look like anything else in this area exactly leads anywhere. I'll do some strafe running, but make a bit of distance. Um, but we came out of here? <clears throat> Makes sense. And then, uh... Oh, I guess there's a red key card at the opposite end, isn't it? Oh, hi there. There we go. Nice. Rocking. Rocking. Nuked files. We've got a slightly different skybox going on here. Wonderful dithering going on. Ooh. All for a shotgun. Hey, I'll accept it. I like how a bunch of these levels have, you know, alternate paths through these vents and other kinds of things going on. And that's always a strength of Duke Nukem's level design, is when you get that happening, so... Um, yeah, even even if it's like, well, does that really mean much? Not bad, but it's cool. And it's weird as well, because, like, the level design isn't really that, uh... You know, it's not that insanely complex. A lot of it is, uh, stuck to the, you know, the orthogonal directions and things like that, but I think just having, like, some, some nice structures. Like, here's the FBI, which is, uh, walled off unless you blow open the front. You can kick the, uh, parking meters. No, I guess not. It would have been cool if you could have kicked them. Cool. Exactly, that's what I wanted them to be. And, uh... Come get some. Pipe bombs. Always right next to the FBI. Uh, yeah. Sup, a a a a a Ooh. <laughs> Nearly got me with that name there. Um, yeah, I just started, but we're gonna try and do the whole thing. Um, the stream, so I'm on level 3. Really taking it by the shotguns, I tell ya. Now that's wonderful. Again, I've never been in the FBI headquarters. Uh, can someone just verify that this is 100% the layout? And if you were to throw pipe bombs up here, this is... Uh, oh boy. Where are we from? England? I'm from uh, Australia. We're doing the Australian kind of gaming. Germany's like the complete opposite side of the world. <laughs> Actually, I don't, is the opposite side on land? I don't think it is. I think we'd be in the Atlantic. Uh, but yeah, I'm having a, a, a bit of a soliloquy slash off the top of my head re uh, recalling a uh, 
the Did You Know gaming video about a uh, Boys for Bob and the Crash Bandicoot 5 that never came to be. As a, as a Freudian slip of a, of a spelling right there. <laughs> Love it. So it's all good. Um, yeah. Um, so the Crash... The Crash Team Rumble, not my jam. Um, there's about 10 minutes left of the video. I didn't quite get it. You finish... Oh, you finish it right now? Nice. Did you enjoy it? And have you played uh, any of the rest of the, uh, the Duke expansions? I came out of doing uh, Duke Zone 2 uh, last week, and uh, my plans are we're going to do the, um, the remaining two expansions. They're both a bit shorter. Um, I'll get them both done uh, next week, and then uh, we'll try and do the 20th anniversary levels the week after. Heard it. Play Beach, Duke it out. Beach one is good fun. The uh, the Christmas one is uh, curious. We'll just say that. That's a bit weird. You have to shoot that, but it makes sense given the way that the vent's structured. Oh my gosh, this just goes all over the place, doesn't it? And we're back out of here. Okay. And now we're in the library. This is library. The winter. I will. Oh, you'll play it in the winter. It is very, very festive. I'm I'm breaking winter tradition and playing a very, very obvious, like, Christmas themed for the content. Not in Christmas, but... I don't actually have a Christmas thing planned for, for streams this year. I've got my Halloween stuff ready, so uh, the timing will be pretty alright. Because, I mean, if I'm done with this in the next two weeks, then that gives me two more streams to get something done in September before Spooky Month. That'd be good fun. Uh, okay, I'm wandering around in loops now, and I haven't got a key card, so we're gonna need to find a key card spot. Or a room that I just didn't go into. Okay, we got a lab in there, that seems like my key. Yeah, this probably makes a bit more sense. Where is it? Not a door I can go in, okay. I'll find my way, don't worry. I mean, that's neat, but... That's a plan? Yeah. I, so I sometimes think of uh, the, the streaming plans a little bit ahead. Um, not a ton, though. I've sort of just got a list of games that I still want to kind of get through. Um, and I'm enjoying just, you know, spending some time chilling. All the stuff. Okay, we wandered in here. Maybe I didn't explore here all the way, because there's no way. Oh, hi there. <laughs> this makes a bit more sense. Yeah, I'm 36 years old. I played Duke Nukem 3D as a kid. It's so scary for me. I am not 36 years old, but I did play it as a, as a kid. And I still... I'm not a big fan of, like, big screen jumps. So, uh... The, uh... The little critters that crawl on your face are, uh... <laughs> they get me every time. That's why you always see me just holding down the Q key. I'm like, yep, not, not dealing with that. Uh, oh, check that out. That's cool. Nice. I like the amount of uh, having to peer through a, a window to open a um, open a door. We're at level three, and I think we've seen it in every level so far. So very nice. Did they even give me the shrink ray? No. Just like pressing a... You gotta like stop and reach over and press the uh, the 9 button to get that. Oh, hi there. <laughs> um, but what are my take homes on, on the story? So I definitely feel that the most important thing, a lot of people are going like, Ugh, I hate Activision now. One, I don't think you should hate Activision just for this, um... Just for this video, because one, every game company is like this. Uh, which version? This is the original. Uh, I'm playing, this is through Eduke um, 32, but I am playing, I have the uh, the 3D Realms Anthology version, which is basically just the regular Atomic Edition. I don't think they changed anything about it, um, other than they shipped it with Eduke 32, so you can play it 
with a nice source port and play that 4K, all that, all that jazz. Um, I do have the uh, the Megaton edition that Devolver released, and I also do have the 20th anniversary release, but I'm gonna stick to playing the levels from that in Ejuke because uh, I don't think they play very nicely. There's something very weird about the mouse aiming in uh, that version, so... Okay, clearly, keycard, door, lots of noise over here. We've got a wall. No secrets in the wall. I'm trying to think, is there a switch? Doesn't, doesn't feel like anything. Oh, there you go. I was like, knew it had to come up somewhere. What exactly did I interact with? Oh, well, duh. Do we want to make motherboard square angle? I will play the 20th anniversary version soon. Nice, nice. Yeah, I I think it's worthwhile. And, and my main goal with um, playing through a lot of these shooters around this time is that a lot of them have had re-releases or extra kind of content. And uh, I apologize, I haven't played through the new Doom levels. <laughs> it's just like, oh my gosh, man. New Doom levels, we had Quake and Quake 2 and... Um, all this good stuff. Um, so I, I like I like this uh, revival of uh, old shooters and even just making more content for the old shooters. Because why argue with that? I have a blue key card. I need a red key card. Oh. Okay. Oh look at that. Very nice. I have yet to play uh, Ion, Ion Fury as well, which I feel like will be a nice love letter to uh, this time period, but we got there. Okay, whoa, whoa. hi there. Damn. Oh, the solid burst, okay. Oh, those pipe bombs are very useful, aren't they? Um, okay, sure. Oh, keep going. Uh, but yeah, let's not treat Activision as like, I mean, sorry, <laughs> I'm not going to say let's not treat Activision as the bad guys. Don't treat Activision as the only bad guys, because ultimately, they're businessmen, and, uh, business people, and all that, and uh, their main goal is they're trying to make money, and from that, we as consumers... Should, uh, it seems to me that games will pass for programs with more love. Yes, we as consumers should value good experiences and that kind of stuff. There is a lot of trash that comes out these days. I'm not saying it's like... Sorry, I don't want to say that all new games are trash, because people do work on them. But rather, there's a lot of... Blair, there's a lot of business decision, kind of, you know, it drives the metrics up. Kinds of things that go on. Um, okay, I'm probably thinking here's probably where to go. Well, she nearly killed everything in the stage already. Oh, I love these long, long lifts. Confirm that, yeah. Um, hi there. Ouch. Oh, it's okay. Um, but yeah, lots of, lots of new games, um, and, and especially the, uh, the Crash team. The Crash Team Rumble is a perfect example of that. It has, it's a, I think it's a 40 US dollar, um, 60 Australian dollar game that was only ever released on the PS5 and the Xbox Series. Oh, thanks for the follow as well. Very, very, very thank you. Um, it was released on the PS5 and the Xbox Series and it's got a micro transactions and a battle pass and all this extra stuff that they're trying to nickel and dime you for. Um, well, I did get the red key card down here, so that's probably time to skedaddle out of this level. Um, but, like, all that, I'm just like, oh, like, where's the love? And on top of that, like, knowing a bit of the backstory of, like, you know, they had these ideas that were sort of shot down, and then they were just told, that, you know, make something kind of quick on a whim. Using the crash license is a unique element. I don't think that actually is, like, the typical thing that you'd see there. There we go. Very, very nice. We have indeed nuked those files. To the next level, the Smithsonian Terror. Man, I really do want uh, more uh, 
sounds a bit weird. Woo! Everyone likes a good train sequence. Um, but yeah, we as we as consumers are, you know, the power in this. These game companies clearly, you know, they want the money. Uh, Smith is the worst level. Do you have snow? Uh, we only have snow on the mountains, but sometimes uh, my parents live like much more rural, and they get snow sometimes. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm jealous. And it's weird because like Australia is very much a desert, but like in the in the cold, that that does get a lot colder. So you do get snow. I live much more um, suburban, and uh, yeah, nah, it's never never that cold. I think the lowest you get is about 13 degrees Celsius. Um, You might get a little colder than that, and definitely in the night, you know, it can get a little cool, but uh, we have had a string of great weather recently. It's like 30 on Wednesday or something, which is like, I feel like for Europe, 30 degrees is starting to get to the, ooh, that's, that's rather toasty. For us, 30 is that, like, real, well, 27 for me is more of a sweet spot, but 30 is like, yeah, it's ballpark. It's around, around the, the nice comfy temperature, and then you just wear, you know, your t-shirts and your shorts all day. It's great. Uh, I've never okay. Uh, I've never I've never been to the Smithsonian. Um, I did watch Night at the Museum though. The sequel is in the Smithsonian. Um, I don't recall this layout. Long hallways and some lifts. Okay, okay. Is this where the dum dum give me dum gum is that? Which room are we in here? I love these double lifts as well, because uh, there's a couple of levels um, where it's like the lifts go... And, and there was one in Duke Zone, right? And it, the lift went up to three floors and it was kind of hard to coordinate that. Actually, maybe. Off the top of my head, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, these, uh, these games are there to... Um, love that sprite, by the way. Uh, are there to make money. And ultimately, if you don't give them money, you have the, you know, the biggest, well, technically you have equally as big a say. You get to say whether that game succeeds or not, whether you want games like that or not, and so on. Now, game companies are complicated. They make a lot of projects, and a game can fail for a lot of reasons. I think one other reason why Crash Team Rumble sometimes failed uh, or, 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 sorry, failed was the marketing kind of sucked. A lot of people didn't realize what the game was even about. Uh, sometimes we have negative 15 in winter when the cold air from Russia. Oh my goodness. I definitely know it gets snow uh, in various parts in Europe, but yeah, no, geez, yeah, you get the cold winds because I've been in England a few times and it's. It didn't get snowy, it was just kind of muggy, very wet. Hail to the um, king, baby. Cool. But while it's a bit miserable, it's also like snow, especially uh, more torrential Ooh. kinds of snow, is like, oh, it's kind of terrifying <laughs> to me. I don't know, so there are a lot of bathrooms in this game. Have you noticed? Like, I'm pretty sure we started the level in a bathroom. We just have tons of toilet enemies. Well, we can sneak around the back to find a pool and ancient worlds. I am, I'm actually thinking that this is probably a deathmatch map, and then you put some doors from here and there, and there you go. It's a, it's now a single player level because there's lots of real like neat little rooms to be fighting people in. Like, I love these, like, little diorama stuff as well. When you got the, the shrunken down sprites and everything. Is this a room over room? No, it's just really, really smart, like, kind of spacing of the map. You have to go to work now. It's a pleasure to get to know you. Thank you, my man. Have a good day at work. Because, yeah, <laughs> I, it's the end of my day and it's the beginning of basically everyone else's. <laughs> have a good one. Yeah, oh, this is good fun. I wonder if that's a map or what the name. Shark, so. Uh. But yeah, I can't keep, keep reiterating, sorry. Um. 
But yeah, ultimately, you as a, a, a consumer have the power in your hands to decide whether these games, you know, succeed or not. And Where from that, it? these companies should be doing Ooh. their best to get the right feedback to know, oh, what, what actually do you want, you know? Um, if Crash Team Rumble fails, I want it to be known that it's because, one... Oh, sorry, not if it fails, because it came out in 2023. Ooh, by the way, have you ever been to Questacon? <laughs> you end the <laughs> Questacon in Canberra is, is real fun. It's like a little science museum, probably the science museum of Australia. And um, I was like, is that an enemy? Or yeah, it was an enemy. Listen, Agatosh, I don't know what you're on because I'm sort of digging this level. Even if I'm just kind of wandering all over the shop. It's just some real fun set pieces, and I love the um, contrasting skyboxes as well when you go from one room to the next and you go to a different skybox. It's good fun. Uh, that's not a door though, unfortunately, but... Oh, it's good fun, and it's all, it's all just packed in. You know what I mean? Like, look at this layout. This is like, woo! And I assume this leads back to that one lobby area, which I didn't go out the little toilet door. Toilet door? Sort of ends around here, right? Oh, well, that's why I didn't go out that way. Okay, but we can go up this way. Very, very nice. Um, so yeah, so what are the reasons it, it could fail? One, I'd say the marketing kind of sucked. They didn't describe what the game was really about or why people would be interested in it. That's always a, you know, a problem. Games need to make people care first of all number two uh microtransactions are poopy poopy doo doo i know they make money i know lots of game studios are leveraging them um for a lot of reasons and some of it is literally because well if some people want to pay money then perhaps we can alleviate a product where other people don't want to pay that money you know you can make a game cost We've got the same mirror problem going on here. We can make a game cost twice as much to make, but still charge the same amount as long as some people are willing to pay the offset. And I get that games do that, but it's still a bit poopy poopy doo doo in my mind. I don't believe it's, um, it's just, just, just hanging, you know? Um, I don't believe many, if any, games are actually designed to work smartly around players being able to, you know, purchase things. Um, I know there's the whole cosmetics angle, um, but I honestly feel like the best incentive that game should be putting in is getting your mates to buy copies, because if you if you can encourage your mates to word of mouth of the Minecraft treatment to purchase a game, you know, then you didn't have to jeopardize any of the experience for an individual person. You just make a game that is so recommendable that people want to get it. Now, I know games are expensive, and I know you're effectively asking to increase the player count just on a whim. Oh, look at that. It's the Smithsonian. Okay, we're just wandering around in a loop, so hold on. Where did... Okay, I came in from here, and then come up here. Oh, okay. This is not a secret, right? No, this is a burn me kind of area. We still have yet. Oh my goodness! Excuse me. Not sure what happened there. But okay. I don't think this pool really goes anywhere. You know, it sort of just laps around and. Yeah. Okay. We're not. We're not seeing anywhere too much here. All okay, right. Um. Maybe that's the, the grip of the level, just constantly try and find where you haven't been and try and nail it down. Is that a map? Or is that just a generic sprite? Oh, hi there. Unfortunately, you can only have one render at a time. That staircase looks highly suspect. No, we've been we've been on the staircase, and we've been. Where have I not been? Still got a bunch of enemies missing. So okay, we're at this lobby. I'm hearing a guy. Okay. 
Is there something further down here, or... We walked up here. I'm not sure where that guy showed up from. Maybe let's head down, uh... Lift 1, which was where I entered from. On the other side. We got this, is where I would have came in from. We have got this... Little hallway here. There's a fun wall. Z fighting. Sign of everyone's... You know, favorite sign aspects and then we're around to some toilets which we visited the toilets I think I visited them maybe I visited one of them Who wants huh. some? Uh, but yeah as for as for the whole you know Activision is evil there is a certain degree of they're taking their, their gambles on the kinds of games that they think will sell well. And that is, you know, entirely them as a business you need to gauge what's going on. Games are expensive these days, and it's rather unfortunate that the game companies don't realize that, hey, you know, maybe we should just reduce scope, release more often, have fewer developers, and maintain a core and a happy and dedicated team that is willing to try things because you have the space to do that. Uh, we currently do not live in a game industry where that's the case. So, uh, this is just on its own. This is an East Gallery. Again, no key card. Now we're back out here, and I've clearly walked past this corridor a couple of times. So now we're back at the spirally doors. Maybe that's our key card. But we've got to come in from somewhere with water. Wrong way. Assuming three-dimensional level design. Assuming that, like, there's going to be a fountain right on top of there. Which, which probably doesn't exist in 3D space, but you know what I mean. Alright, find some water and swim down through it. Oh, I haven't gone left here as well. Very nice, albeit the rendering sort of panics around there, but that's okay. And I've been through this loop, because how? Okay. That's not, a, yeah, I was like, that's not a thing you shoot. Oh, oh! There we go, my hunch was correct. But it's a secret. It's not the way to go, it's just a secret. Oh my goodness, where are we going? Oh boy. You cheeky fellas. You cheeky fellas. You put platforming in, in the whole game. The king, there you go. Very, very nice. Uh, I gotta somehow get back down. Okay. Very nice. That's just fun and tucked away. Good on them. Good on these level designers. Unfortunately for the level designers, I still do not know where the keycard is. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um. As for, yeah, the, the happy team experience, I think, unfortunately, has been let go on the wayside too much. I think a lot of these game studios are being driven, well, are, are too big. They're, they're being driven by people who are too far removed from the developers that they are not valuing the actual end product and the craft of the developers themselves. Now, that doesn't mean that, like, the, you know, like, a happy developer means more money, but I think that you need some consistency in your team. Because, obviously, when you hire a new person, especially for a programming job, or, or um, maybe not an art job, I think art's maybe a bit easier to jump into, but, uh, okay, these boxes screaming out to me as... Okay, new, new area, new hallway. Uh That's somewhere else. That's not where I needed to be. Is that a secret? It's a slightly dimmer wall. Not sure what's going on there, but okay. I mean you got the you got the uh the health in there and it clearly looks like it connects out to just here. Not sure what's going on there, but okay. Hmm, curious. 
And it is the reason, this reason, why I'm, I'm kind of glad I've dedicated this to one stream. Um, okay, alright. I'm going nuts now. We gotta, we gotta figure out some, some design. Okay. You are here. You're looking at this hallway. Where is that red? Is that hin indicating anything worthwhile or maybe? So if I keep wandering, am I going to find like a dot in the other direction? I got to somehow get up there. So we'll go around here. We're now up at the space land. And space land excitement is abound. Also, does that look like a vent that I didn't go left in? Hold on. We got the vent. I didn't go left down here. Okay, that connects over here. Maybe? Oh my goodness, we did it! We found the key card. It was just in there the whole time. Okay, now I gotta... I think it's actually just here as well. Genius, guys. Genius. That might be reused by a different level later on. Alright, it's currently, like, the least straightforward level, but I'm digging what it's going for. And there's something, there's something so charming about getting the, you know, getting the layout right. Having, like, these little aquarium bits here, you know? Splash noises. Uh... But yeah, these, these studios need to understand that, like, getting your development team stable is very important. I'm not saying that necessarily, you know, that, uh, you keep your developers on a, you know, what's the term? You let them go out and do whatever. Because your developers are not your marketers. They're not your market research. People at Activision clearly know what they're doing in terms of we want to make money, Call of Duty makes a ton of money, constantly supporting and making features for Call of Duty will indeed make a lot of money, and they are sort of right on that one. But, I think that companies should somewhat jeopardize their- jeopardize is probably not the best word for this. They should question that- oh. <laughs> it's just a module. Um, Companies should be willing to uh, expend some of their developer, sorry, some of their profits to ensure a happy workplace. Um, I think that's the case for basically any business. And I know that sounds like from our perspective kind of duh, but real talk, a lot of, you know, studios, a lot of uh, companies do not get that. They see the bottom line and that is the be all end all. And I'm like, you, you need to have a place that people want to work. And even if you're not necessarily the, you know, the highest paying work or that kind of stuff, if you've got the good culture, you are having a hidden benefit. People enjoy your stuff. They will keep buying your stuff. People, um, you know, people enjoy working for you. They will keep working for you. You need to balance that out. You need to properly have that, like, you know, just that last bit of trade-off. <laughs> Bit of a weird little tucked away part. Come on. There we go. Okay, your guess is as good as mine where that opened up. Probably uh, the door just back here. You know, I was thinking, it's like, there's probably some way to get into it. Lots of sharks. I want to get that switch and get eaten by a shark, you know, as you do. Uh. Uh, open the back here. You know what's what we're in for. More sharks. Hi sharks, how you doing? What are we doing? We got this one. <laughs> okay, I'm getting the gist guys. Oh, really? Okay. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> I was like, let's hit the first two. I heard the noise. Okay. And now what? Uh, this store. I have to keep looking at my map because I'm getting myself turned around. I'm losing track of where anything is. Hi there, how are you doing? Is that a door I can see through? Oh my gosh. Work. There we 
go. Swim through here. You know what this leads? That one key card we saw ages ago. Okay, it's a. Do we have a quick getaway or no? We're just gonna have to wander back. Okay. Do you remember where the blue key card door was? Cause, uh, oh boy, I don't. Uh, that's where I went. So we're just gonna keep cruising around until we see a blue key card slot somewhere. Uh, I don't suppose it was forward here as well, right? I know this, <sighs> this uh, opened back up somewhere. Again, not a lot of room over room. They're just packing it in quite nicely. Oh, right, given that that opened up. Ah, uh, boy, where, where would this key card go? We're going to wander around for days until we find this. That's where the style of level was. Which, remember that tram part was the start of the level as well. Little, little train car. Hey, it's only ten levels. We got this, don't worry. Um, mm, boy, mm, boy. Cruise around the perimeter. It might click to me. I don't suppose it was anywhere around here, because this is like where all the... Museum stuff was, unless it was right at the back there. You see that, like, potential... Dead uh, a red key card! I need a red key card at the end! Oh my goodness. Ah! Ah! Groovy. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Okay, that was fun. That was fun. <laughs> uh... But yeah, uh, lots of development teams get very, you know, disgruntled. And especially, uh, one thing that they said in the in the video was, uh, s uh, several employees said that working on Call of Duty felt like a punishment for poor sales. If if you are a healthy workplace, you would not have this ever happen. You would not have your developers go, hmm, you know, if only I got those sales, which is slightly out of your control when marketing doesn't do as good a job as um, desired. I'm not saying with the tw with what they had given them, you know, would you have done any better? I, I wouldn't say I could have done better. But certainly, it could have been a lot better. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. are we going to fall over? Yes. Okay. Oh my goodness. What am I looking for in here? I need the red key card. It hasn't yet appeared, and it looks like there's a door that to, to the mummy room. Which will eventually open up, but you're seeing that uh, the kill counter keeps going up. More enemies keep spawning as I walk into certain corridors. Oh, I guess the kill counter. Oh, hold on. There we go. Where's my mummy? He's chilling there. He's vibing. I was gonna say, do we have a rocket launcher? And the answer is no, still. Not yet. Just gonna wing the pipe bomb for a bit, aren't we? Oh boy. But yeah, as, as someone who, like, has worked for a big company, not necessarily a gaming company, but Jeff definitely a big company, I feel like there's a lot of mm, issues that big companies can definitely fall into. Uh, and certainly, I think not having a pulse on your underlying developers is, like, it's catastrophic. It's basically like, hi, yes, you know, you're, you're a machine. You enter the machine. We've got the red key card, by the way. So now I just gotta do the the waltz back. 
which is awkwardly not at this part of the level. It's sort of sort of back around here. It's a bit of a journey of a level, though. I'll tell you that. Hopefully, there's nothing too scary behind this door. Nah, we're good. Whew. Greetings, Blub. How's it going? To the capital punishment. You jerk, game. Can't just put turrets at me like that. Made a bit of a distance from uh, the White House, and uh, it's looking a bit interesting. Also, Duke Nukem himself is being advertised in DC. Probably because he's technically a movie star. Isn't that kind of the concept of Duke Nukem? He is a movie star, he's just like, the aliens are coming over, I'm gonna basically, like, tote some guns and heroically save the day, and uh, ironically, he does. Isn't that what that, uh, that is? Maybe. Check this out. It's been a while since we've had one of these. Ah, I'm in the poop. Oh, oh, oh. 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 What's going on out there? Oh, hi. Why is the building burning? I was pooping, and while I was pooping, Tom was arriving in the house. Oh, that's the worst feeling. That's the worst. Oh, gosh. That's the worst when... I... I always take plumbing and, and toiletry for granted until it stops working and then suddenly it's the absolute worst thing. Oh, check it out. It's like the spaceship that came on. Apart from that, you were feeling fine. I mean, that's actually, like, okay, real talk, like, bottled water is, like, it feels weird, but it's, like, that's what it's for. That's, that's the big, like, you know, market for bottled water, not market, but, like, you know, sanitary water, basically. If you're really, really hardcore, you can get, like, actual, like, tanks of, of bottled water. Like, you buy them in, like, the 15 liter tubs and you swap them in and out. Maybe you can have, like, a hot swap. Gosh, you can have like a hot swap going on where you can have what two loaded mess. at once and when one's done, you swap it out to the next one and so on. They're kind of insane. <laughs> okay, we are not going in that direction. We are just... Oh. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Saw the key card. Hi, I'm going to want that. There we go. All of this to... I mean, yeah, is there a way to leave from up here? Not that way. Maybe this way. Yeah, this way. Luckily, that would be pretty unnecessary. True, I mean, if it's one time, then... Yeah. Oh, hi there. I always keep getting thrown off as well that, like, the House of Reps is, like, across the way, and there's an underground passageway. I learned that in a very, very political scenario that happened. Or politicized, sorry. Of course, it involves politicians, of course it's political. But you know what I mean, where it's like... Politicians are gonna, like, make note of something. I just hadn't been informed plumbers. Yeah, I... I've been in the same boat. Not... not with... Actually, sort of, with plumbers. I had one where it's like, it came over at like 7am and I'm like having a shower. And uh, it's not that they shut off my water, but it's that they buzzed on my door and then I'm like, Oh, well, he's not home. And they just left. And I'm like, eh. Probably better than coming in on me in the shower though. Oh my gosh. Lots of explosions in this level. Oh! I was on like full health. Not Go that wasn't full health, up. but I was on more health. Um, so you caught me in a soliloquy about, a uh, about, uh, the Toys for Bob, uh, Crash 5, uh, video on, uh, the Did You Know Gaming channel. Um, very, very long video, uh, but, uh, the TLDR is, uh, Activision sucks, but really, any game company, or really, lots of big companies suck. They don't value the, um, you know, the individuals who work there very much, and, uh, a lot of them are kind of, right now, scraping, you know, profits right now. They're kind of going, ooh, the profits are a bit thin, time to 
go all out as opposed to foster a good culture and a good plan to get past the global recession or other things like that. If only Bill Clinton could help me out here. Do you know the story of Plants vs. Zombies 1 and 2? I do not know specifically about that story. Do tell. Give me, give me a good rundown of them. What did that switch activate? Because it's not like they... I mean, I guess I could come back. That was just a dead end, and I guess we got a third pathway here that I just opened up. Uh, I've played I've played one. I haven't played two because two was on mo mobile, and I thought it had like a terrible energy system associated. I think maybe it did. I hope that's just like eternally scrolling. That's good fun. One is dripping. Yes. Oh, it wasn't. It wasn't eternally scrolling. Yeah, one, one's a one's a jam. Gosh, he's a little boss, ain't he? Uh, is it all those little descriptions of plants and things like that? Yes. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Okay, not, not in the Bill Clinton room. We don't need to go to the Bill Clinton room. No, Bill. No. I'm married. Uh, they wanted to... Okay, so the director thinks, uh, I think it was... He did not like the plans for the publishers for two. They wanted to milk it for more money, so he left. That's exactly what happened with the Toys for Bob thing. A lot of people left before the Crash Team Rumble release. And, uh... Yeah, it's like, it's the same name of the studio. But it's not the same people. I think our blue key card was just on the opposite side here, so I just duck on over and we're out of this level, I guess. It took me a while to get the six key. I'm like trying to mash the neighboring keys going on. I like how a lot of these levels end in a big, big alien sequence. I have a devastator, don't I? Yeah. Oh, okay. We got some dumb way quicker. From what I can see of two, checked out a lot of videos because I love Plants vs. Zombies. It does have that atmosphere. Um, hi there. Um, let's go to Jetpack. So that's cool. Just spawn dudes on top of me. Oh no, it was just a bunch of eggs over here. Okay. Doesn't have the charm. Yeah, that's a that's a big problem with a lot of these um, sequel games, and especially ones with different studios that have gone on to crazy success. Damn, I'm good. All for the red key card. Okay, by the way. Oh, oops. Where was the red key card put in? Um, we got our third walkway. Don't think it was in, in, in. It feels right to be in there. Given that I got a jetpack, maybe it makes sense to like go backwards through here. You know what I mean? Like we can we can fly back out of out of here, back in here. Hey, there's the red key card. What a what a very, very nice way to tuck the level back in. Because that's where I came out. We got like... A bit, oh, a bit like all versus all. Just going to fall. I do heavy breathing all the time. All the time. Cool. Come get some. Well, I, to be fair though, that is the level design. They want you to basically backtrack all the way and I just didn't quite notice that the red keycard slot was right here. To the metro! I love that these levels interconnect like that as well. Ah, oh, it's so well designed. They thought of the maps real nicely in this one. Like, they just have a lot of, like, great identity, even though, other than, like, some different textures, you know, we haven't seen any new enemies, no new weapons. Don't need it. Uh, this level contains the only secret, uh, exit, so, uh, we'll get that secret level very soon, as well. Uh, I don't have to look it up, I, I tested it, I, I made sure I knew where it was. Uh, but I love this level, because you got this, uh, this train that just keeps visiting, and you can see on the, the map, <laughs> it's just got this loop. 
Same here. Oh, and you can't stand on the, the, the walkway. It's bad for your health. Um Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a good watch that that um that Did You Know Gaming video. Long one, definitely lots of details and a lot of things just kind of describing the history of Toys for Bob. Uh more so than the specifics about well not more so because you still have the specifics, but um you know, if you just want the specifics, um you could probably recap them a lot quicker than what the video goes into. Um, but I think it's a it's a real solid watch because, uh, yeah, game companies are big machines, and uh, yeah, they don't. It's it's cruel, but yeah, they're legitimately right now favoring just the the profits rather than the you know the great experience of both the, the developers and the uh, the games themselves, and. Uh, it's a bit of a shame. Kind of interesting, you gotta like jump over here to get the blue key card. It's a bit of a curious spot, but I like it. It's good fun. And you gotta touch a bit of touch a bit of fire. You can't can't get can't get by without a bit of lightning. I don't know if that's a phrase. At least I got the signs. They didn't do the rails though. You don't you can't do the rails. I'm actually curious as well if uh because you can just fly it. Okay, <laughs> there's a wall. Got it. And obviously, we can't plot too much of this level. We've got ducats sleeping with the enemy. Uh, Cibber... Cibarella? Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, let's just wait for the train to come back. I wish my trains came around this quickly. Actually, last week I mentioned that uh, that new metro in Sydney, and I took it a ride, and I was like, oh my goodness, this thing gets here very quick. The stations are massive, the new stations they built for it. I'm like, are they really expecting that many people to get on this? I think the answer is potentially. Um, I worry that it may lead to fewer trains running on uh, the other lines, because they did that before. They introduced a new line, and then went, okay, we're going to divert... Uh, workforce from the old lines and it's like cool because you can't go from one train line to the other well sorry you can't ride only the new train line you gotta still have the old one in service and they sort of abandoned it for quite a few years that was a bit fun uh but yeah no i like the new trains the new metros it's weird calling them trains because they try to differentiate the metros from trains they're both trains, it's just one's more like a, one's more like a, um, a New York subway, which, uh, a lot, a lot of people I know are like, oh, don't, don't let it turn out like that. This is DC, at least. This is, you know, perfectly clean. And yet another level with toilet enemies. Gotta have those toilet enemies. One more, for good old time's sake. And they threw you a pipe bomb. You saw that. This one's a weird one, I feel, because it's like it puts you out, like, here. You're just meant to notice that you can kind of run across to this platform, and then sort of, oh. Yeah, the door's on the wrong side. Okay, we'll just, oh, we'll just jump in. Oh. But this is, this is where you yeah, you're meant to sort of explore off to, this little side kind of place. And there's punches of goodies on those, uh, remaining parts there. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, it's Dismal talking about, uh, you know, uh, Toys for Bob, the studio, uh, got a breakout. They managed to, you know, get themselves to be independent again, so good on them. Hopefully the talent comes back, and hopefully they can, uh, you know, recover, um, some semblance of, uh, you know, enjoying game development, because I, that's the worst part as well. A lot of people, if you have a bad experience as a developer, you don't want to come back to the industry. And that's, like, demoralizing as heck. So, like, you know, be like, you know, you could be a very talented game designer or a game person. Uh, probably check out there were any big news at the Gamescom. Oh, yeah, did that just happen? I didn't even, I didn't even realize that happened. That's probably why I got all the announcements of some games, but my mates only singled out like a couple. There was the Civ the Civilization 7 game demo. I got some mates who were decently hyped about it, but then also 
I could just buy humanity. I own humanity. It was in a humble uh, player two weeks ago. Don't have time. Time. <laughs> it's so good. This is a door you can shoot through as well, but it's confusing because you won't be able to see through it and uh, projectiles are going get. I think he's still there. Yep, okay, he's gone now. Um, now, okay, confusingly, this is where the secret exit lies. Somewhere around here. I love these, <laughs> these little highways as well. Uh, oh boy, do I remember it. So, this one. Is it a thing to an altar Duke Nukem? Maybe? I don't know if it is. Uh... Let's see as well. Oh yeah, yeah, and this one as well. You got this little switch, hilarious switch here. But it uh, reveals a couple of enemies. Pokemon Red taught me that gambling is very addictive, but that casinos are evil. That is a good life lesson as well. Very, very good life lesson. At least we got the RPG now. Uh, oh my gosh, where where was this off the top of my head? I thought you had to interact with one of these arcade machines. Don't have time to play with my ah, there you go. Uh, running out of health there, aren't we? You got your little shrink ray, but also you got another little arcade machine over here. Where is it? That you can jump into, because why not? I think there's actually just a regular old secret. Maybe it is just a regular secret. I farm Porygon. Basically everything from the casino. That is in Pokemon Red. That is basically the only thing you can get from it. And a Dratini, if you want to get a Dratini somewhat early. Um, oh, I remember where the secret exit. So I'll show the regular exit, and then we'll sort of double back to the secret exit. Um, but yeah, let's talk about uh, some some good fun news. Um, there was a oh fun fun. I don't know. <laughs> it'll be the it'll be the judge. It's been a long time gambling. If you play uh, Dragon Quest, Dragon Quest is uh, brilliant at uh, letting you win eventually. Um, so there's a yeah, there's a little like side cut here, which has some goodies. But this actually has the uh, the key to the secret exit, which is uh, if you see that little wall there. Got a lot of enemies around here, by the way. They do give you more pipe bombs, which is nice. Uh, yeah, no, Dragon Quest is good fun, so... Uh, but no, the story I wanted to mention was... Um, the, the demoralizing... Working at a game studio... Uh, the demoralizing comes in multiple avenues. And the Toys for Bob story is specifically about the game studio itself... Uh, really being different... Giving a different expectation compared to what the fans really want. Um, the other example I've got is uh, more the fans maybe don't exist, but the studios are getting some real like strong backing. I don't know what's up with that. Um, the example game of the moment is Concord, a game that I did mention uh, talking about the um, the E3 state of play. Uh, that's the end of the level, by the way. So I'll show off the regular exit just right now. We'll just wander back. We're gonna have to awkwardly try and hitch the. Mm, nah, we'll just jump it. Uh, da, 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 da. All for that, all to get there. And then uh, if we head up here, we got our little convenience store clerk, very nice. Cash register secret. Would have been funny if it ran you. It, it, it would have. It would have, yeah. And then this is where you pop your red key card. Everyone's favorite enemy. And I'm pretty sure the level just ends around here. There you go. Oh, did you want a mini boss? We got a mini boss for you. Yeah, 
is not too bad though. And there's your end of level. As well as also a uh, grate on the ground. And a very, very weirdly... Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe that was a triangles framing as a quad there. Just the auto map didn't know what to do there. Okay. But anyway, I didn't save. We're back here. Don't worry. Uh, so let's wander back through the little tunnel and let's activate our secret exit and do our secret level. A bit weird. You can't like wedge your way in here. So you just gotta, you know, jump in here and jump through there. Secret level. And you got the sound as well. Very nice. Uh, Concord is a game that I think I mentioned. I sort of went, I'm not in the mood for a hero shooter. Uh, there's a lot of people who are poking more holes at a uh, subtext and other kinds of things uh, associated to the game. Um, but in particular, when they showed the game, this is another um, example of the marketing did not click with me at all. They showed a bunch of wacky characters doing Guardians of the Galaxy style. We're doing a heist kind of thing. Um, and I don't know who these characters are. And I don't really know much about it. And uh, if you told me the game was just a hero shooter, I would have been like, uh, okay, then what's the point of this? Because it doesn't represent the game at all. Uh, I know. I get people... I get it. People worked hard on, you know, a cinematic, but it's like, oh, You want me to buy your game? Just show off a cool game. You don't have to, don't have to put in this effort. Jeez. Jeez. What, what, what way to treat a friend is that? Oh, Bill Clinton is Zed fighting. Uh, for reminders, everyone, for historical reasons, these this was. Who is this? That's not Hillary, is it? She, did, she didn't look like that at the time. Nah. <clears throat> Don't know who that is, but Bill Clinton would have been the sitting president at the time of this game's <clears throat> release. That's why it's <clears throat> topical to have him, and also why there's no other. I guess. I guess. <laughs> No newer president, if you're trying to remember Bush or Obama. Was Obama even in government in 96? That one guy phased- they're phasing out of the level. They're gonna come back and bite me in the butt. Um, we got a bunch of enemies in this level as well. I'm worried that either there's gonna be like a big horde encounter or... We're gonna get lost like I did in the Smithsonian. Ah, come on! <laughs> Alright, they gotta stop doing that. I'm gonna knock knock points of level design. Someone I used to watch. Ah, oh, I've got the chat open. Who was studying game design at the time, always said, and I'm skipping from cutting some spent hours making this to make sure you will spend hours appreciating this. Yeah, uh, there's. I. As just a gamer, I sometimes feel bad when games get into the I don't care state. And I've had that happen a lot of times on games that are brand, brand new, and I'm like. This, this really does hurt, because I know someone cared, but they have failed to make me care. Also, I guess, uh, working on the ends of games, and people not getting to the ends of them. Um, that's why a lot of games as well nowadays are just long and get players to get through everything, or fine. Um, which is a bit unfortunate, because it's like... Is that how you should be designing games? We can also head down here, by the way. Look up the warehouse counter. Also, players are stupid. Players are stupid. Like, just ima imagine how stupid the average, like, you know, like, if you play multiplayer, oh my god. If you play a multiplayer game, just think how dumb the average player is, and then, like, I'm gonna George Carl on this, and half of them are dumber than that. Okay, they are just... Aye, yes. deal with the kamikazes. Get them off my neck. Um, but like, yeah, real talk, like, uh, a lot of people who play games are not, well, I don't want to say dumb as in like, you know, they're, they're lost causes, but I would probably say the average person who, like, I guess, goes on Twitch regularly, will say, plays more games than the average person. Games need to teach things, yes, and, and a lot of games do, for better or for worse, rely on gaming fundamentals and know-how and everyone's gonna have every game is gonna be someone's first game uh, it's gonna throw people off um what's with this like higher ledge here it's just here.
These are meant to be underwater, aren't they? They don't count as enemies, by the way, don't worry. Um, don't mean pop-up text. Oh, I love the, uh, the cryogenic freeze. Very nice dioramas. I believe they're proper frozen, they're, they're just sprites. I think. Watched a video recently of the Crash Bandicoot games recently, uh, which I, uh, all have not played. Oh, you should definitely play them at some point. Actually, okay, just, just a slight spoiler if I ever get around to talking about this stream. Uh, I played Jack and Daxter for the first time, uh, literally yesterday. Just the whole game. Just binge it all. And, uh, oh, it was such a treat. And, uh, I hadn't played the Crash Bandicoot games growing up. I played, uh, Wrath of Cortex growing up, but that wasn't them. That was Traveler's Tales. Uh, and we talked about, uh, the game. Uh, until, like the first bad one, made sure the player had to jump over a fissure early in the first level, and same for the spin attack. I think that's that's definitely wise, yeah. Because you you really need your players to just get it. Um, I never played... I, so, Wrath of Cortex as a kid, it started off with an ice level. Like, the first level is an ice level. You get a choice of uh, five levels to start off, and I found one of them was a lot easier than the rest, but they're all kind of oh, a bit advance for me. Um, so as a kid, I actually never really beat that game uh, very easily. Now that I sort of breeze through it, because it's just like, oh, it's a platform, you know. Just learn how to platform. <clears throat> Easy. Um, but you're definitely right, where like, yeah, you do need to really push your players into just doing the game early on. That sounds so obvious, but... Oh, very nice. But you, re you do really need to get your players into just experiencing all those mechanics. Um, sometimes it's nice to, you know, like, drip feed content and, and kinds of styles and things like that. But at the end of the day, you do need your players to learn to do something. Um, two hours before the actual game starts, you lose so many people that... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, RPGs are uh, classic examples of... Uh, well, not, not, not all RPGs, because another one I played this week. Uh, two games I played this week in, in full. About to finish. Uh, the other one was Fantasy Star on the uh, the, the uh, Master System. Very old school RPG. And, um... Steam Achievement showed that. It showed us how uh, crazy big number, the number of people who finished Elden Ring was. Yeah, yeah, that one's always a, a doozy. And, and, and Elden Ring is a very exceptional game in terms of, I think, way more people finish Elden Ring than various other games. And, uh, that's always a, that's always a doozy. Okay, where was I? I was tweaking that in here. We've now gone to the far end, because that was on that setting, and now it's on that setting, which is all good. So we've done all the ones over here. These guys are still frozen. Door is still closed. And I didn't grab any key cards or whatever, and that doesn't look like it connects anywhere because that would just lead straight into this wall. We've been up here. Like for the mid-game bosses, you find like 50% achievement rate or something a couple months after release. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I... Steam achievements as well, like you would have maybe, uh... I, I know it's weird, and especially for a game that doesn't really have sales, but like bot farms to get like achievement trading cards. Not achievement trading cards, but like... You know what I mean? It's like, it's a weird kind of thing that's even there. Okay, I'm wandering around now. We're just gonna navigate around. So that's not open. That's not open. We're completely stuck over here. I need a, I need something to give me a specifically blue keycard, for that? <coughs> These are just door or bookshelves. They just lead into a wall. There's nothing too much going on there. These are just toilets. They don't have any exits. Like most games are doing that well if they have 20% for the boss of the second level, even if they had 90% achievement rate starting the first level. Yeah, that as well as, like, the, having an achievement for the number of people who began playing the game, like, after starting it up. Because I believe it counts as the 100% number that they compute against is the number of players who have tracked playtime in that game. It's not necessarily ownership, just because ownership can be, you can refund the game, but you should still count for achievement progress. But, yeah, it's like the moment you have playtime, it's like, okay, now you count. Ah, uh, what, what is going on here? What is it? 
Oh, the desks every time. <laughs> but that's also not necessarily like you know the games uh gotta have gotta have a claw section that's not necessarily the games like filtering people as well sometimes it's just people don't have the time or people get bored it sometimes happens um, i can't personally say for elden ring but i will definitely say uh a game that i tried i really did try is um atelier iris on the ps2 i know some people are going to say they grew up with that game and i apologize profusely but i got bored and i put it down and i don't know if i'd return to that one in particular um really appreciating these uh ones. uh go these guys for a moment. uh elden ring takes a comparatively massive amount of time and commitment yeah, El Elden Ring is very impressive for getting numbers like that. For a game that long, and for a game that hard. Because you would imagine that would filter a lot of people. A classic one, I think, like, you can compare against is... Games that play themselves. I'm not saying The Walking Dead is 100% like, you know, there's no puzzles. But it certainly is a very, very... It will describe the whole game to you. Cool. And how many people didn't finish the game after they started. I am included in that. I stopped after episode 3. I never got around to finishing it because I sort of got a bit more. And it's like, that's that's not even like due to any difficulty. That's just literally like, oh. There was a weak wall. I saw the weak wall. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh, it's just for secrets. Yeah, I like me my good secrets. Okay, so this leads back here. Why do we want to go back here? I did grab a keycard. So, we'll go back up. We finally got that blue keycard. Look at that, that's only half the enemies in this secret level. They're putting the hours on this one. You're going to be shocked next week when... How short the Christmas, like, uh, levels are. They're like... They're shockingly short, and there's only seven levels. It's just like, oh boy. And the quality kind of sucks. Whereas at least these levels are like, really top shop. It's weird as well, because these guys made the, uh, the Duke Caribbean, um, expansion as well. And I feel like that's a bit of a, bit of a dip in quality. Oh my goodness. It's a bit of a dip in quality on that one. Um... <coughs> happening here by the way is that just a texture i think that's just a texture very impressive texture there you go he's getting away from me he's just gonna sneak up and nail me at some point oh, okay Dude, i'm terrified about just like getting ambushed by these fellas again oh may have duped one of them out. Oh. There you go. So, uh... So, anyway, Concord, it's a, it's a, it's a hero shooter. I wasn't interested in it. And, uh... Turns out, it doesn't have a lot of players on PC. It's a Sony published game, which made the PC release kind of intriguing for me, because um, usually a lot of Sony, in fact, actually as well, a lot of the Sony CEO said, uh, our approach for PC games is we're going to attract players uh, by putting earlier games in a franchise and then make them, you know, basically buy a PS5, i.e. an inferior console, to play the sequels, at least ahead of time. Final Fantasy 16 did get a PC release date. It's actually coming out next month. It's like real soon. Um, uh, so if you're a PS5 holdout, uh, and you wanted to play Final Fantasy 16, uh, wait, n not much longer, because it's, it's about to come out. <laughs> um, and that's a, that, that was such a weird statement from the CEO, because it's like, it? uh, most PC players have invested in a more powerful machine, or a machine that they like updating and improving over time. There's just, there is just a, a different market for PC games. 
um, or at least PC versions of games. There's not really any reason why a game that is on a console can't also be on a PC, other than you just don't want it to be there. Oh, look at that keycard, and I know I have the chat pack, but I want to try and figure out how to do this without it. Look at that. Oh. Is he stuck in there as well? You think we can get in there as well? That'd be good. Uh, da, 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 da. Also, that was a red keycard. Where's the, where's the red one go? Was it... Yeah, piece of cake. Oh, I know where this is. No, I don't. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> I know where this is. Okay. We're back in the uh, the Bill Clinton Z fighting office. There we go. Uh, I don't believe the red key card was before this, though. So it would have been somewhere in this warehouse. I think it was, yeah, on this wall. There we go. Danger. Unstable time travel device. Ah. Oh. Nice. Nice. Where, where's the love like this, you know? We need games that are like this. Um. But yeah. Ah. Uh. I don't have a lot to say about Concord because I haven't played it and I don't really have interest in it but it's just kind of a part head. of me is like do I just try and rip on games that I didn't have any interest in I don't know it's a, <laughs> I don't know if it makes the most interesting content for me to make uh, um, the shark every time you ever heard of the butterfly effect because uh, I haven't <laughs> Hit. Oh, there's one. There's two lost sharks in there. Oh my gosh, I a... Just inexplicable shark pit. Okay. Well, we need to climb the Chichen Itza one day. Hi there. Oh. As well. Very, very nice. Very, very nice with the water. Oh, you weren't expecting this level to go here, were you? This is a very, like... Rather interesting secret level, you know? Oh my gosh. Little tiny hallway. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where this is going. Are we back in the Smithsonian? Did we just... Did we just casual... I think we are, actually. Cause it's like, oh, we gotta, we gotta somehow connect it up. Like, what a, what a curious, like, route, you know? Back through some buildings, hi there. There we go. Um, yeah, I feel, I worry that Concord is, um, oh, what, yeah, one thing I want to mention, so, the, the social media stir, I guess, around Concord is quite interesting. I've seen definitely uh, several uh, pundits that I follow kind of go, oh, Concord's terrible kind of stuff and all that jazz and you know, nothing new. But also, I've seen actual developers at Sony, different studios that maybe if they did work on concord oh my gosh how many teams did they get involved on this but like teams like insomniac teams like naughty dog teams like uh who else does sony have i don't know um all going oh you know congrats to the concord devs for shipping out your game and it's like Go i where yourself. was this for other games your studio makes this one kind of game and uh you know, you're praising this other game. I'm not saying they can't, because obviously, you know, they all work at the same parent studio. There's no reason why they can't support each other. So what is going on over here? The pit cops. Just sniping. It's really throwing me off up there. I know, I know, I can jump up to them. I think there's a 
There's a little catwalk up here I can go around to. Here we go. Yeah, I'll probably come leave me up come. here. This is only half the catwalk, is it not? Oh. Okay, where are we going now? Do we have a bridge to the other side? Maybe we have a pathway over here. Oh, I thought we'd have something in the water. I guess not. I guess not. Um, but yeah, and and one thing I saw as well was one of the developers, just just a developer. It's not anything that formal from the studio. Uh, seems a bit too bait. Come get some. I'm curious about that ledge. I'm actually gonna just reinvestigate this ledge for a hot second. Get the jetpack out. Where does this come to? Yeah, where does this connect? How do you get up there? Uh, it's curious. Unless I've just shortcutted it and... No, no, no. No. Oh, it's a secret. Ah, okay. Today I learned. Now we killed those guys, so we're all good. <laughs> um... But yeah, like, I've... Uh, one of the developers just kind of went like, pay me eight dollars to unblock your posts, like, sort of trashing on... on the game. Um... And that's, uh... Interesting behavior? Because one, it's attracting a lot of people to the hidden replies. People wouldn't know that there's a hidden reply if you didn't tell people there was a hidden reply. You know, there's that. Uh, but also just, like, why? Like, why are you responding to the negative feedback? Just go celebrate your game, you know? Like, I, I, the, a part of me is like, okay, people are gonna rip into games and stuff that they, like, don't like. That's always gonna happen. On the flip side, you don't have to interact with any of them as as a developer. Like, like you don't you know what I mean? I don't know. It just seems like just leave your social media with the good stuff. You know, like uh, seems bizarre to me. Um, now that being said, of course, how much legitimate you know praise is there? That is a good question because. Uh, I don't know many, there's not a lot of people playing on Steam. I think the player count is in the hundreds, which is okay, but it's not great. Oh, diving hole. Oh, oh, I see what's going on here. Oh, jeez, hi there. Is he in the water? He is in the water. I've just casually, like, sat on him just then. Maybe I should peer out across here first. Come. I love the test tubes everywhere. Are they in there or no? It's 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 in the back wall. No, I don't know where that is. Okay. I don't know what I've been told. I'm just I'm just leave out of here, right? I'm running, I'm running out of ammo, running out of health. Just just get the heck out of dodge. We got a boat. We can make a great getaway. I'm trying to crouch it in. It's not doing anything. I think they probably just want you to. Oh, I see him in this water. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good to know that water is a bit cursed. <laughs> I think I got them all. Although, uh, still only... Ooh. Hi there! Shop out of there. Would you say these kamikaze bombers are more menacing with a droning sound than the serious sand? The serious sand ones, at least you can run around them. Oh, I just realized as well, they both dropped into the same pit. Who is Bill, and why is he like tagged his name just right there? Yeah, at least the serious Sam ones you can sort of deal with. Oh, hi. Just 
the mini boss variety, don't worry. But there's three of them. Dang it. Take two. Got him. Okay. I yeah, I shot myself there. <laughs> Can we get some uh some goodies for doing a secret level or nah, nah, you just needed to do a 24 minute secret level, you know? Oh, sorry, it keeps going. Oh goodness. No, 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 no. <laughs> why why are there so many of these guys? Oh my goodness. And it's, it's really only in this level. Okay. <laughs> we're, just, we're just getting out of here. We're just getting out of here. You know it's good when the part time is 16 minutes, so. Brown water. Ooh. Classic DC. Let's see how many of these guys I can just get with a pipe bomb. Alright, that's already a third of the enemies. I know, I know. I, I'm not trying to get all the enemies. I'm just trying to have a good time. And sometimes having a good time is knowing how to preserve yourself. A lot of that Duke Zone stream last week was just all about self-preservation. You just had to, like, get, get through, survive. Bulky shark. We got boots. We finally got boots. A lot of people rip on the difficulty, and I think it is legitimately, like, just because people stand, well, not stand still, but people want to try and get all the enemies, I'm like, uh, at some point you just have to know that, like, they're not designed, like, you know, well, e even though there's a counter at the end, they're not designed to have fun. Ooh, very nice, as well as some explosive Ooh. barrels in the same room. Soundtrack's always a vibe. <clears throat> Going through some. Oh. Damn, I'm good. In hell. There we go. Okay, no, nope. we just keep going. Oh, down. Uh, at least I got the boots. Pick up. Gonna swim in some muck. Ow, jeez. Uh, but yeah, so, uh. Otherwise, though, uh. Don't really have a lot to say about Concord. It's just, hey, keep an eye out. It's a game, and there's lots of uh, attention being driven to it by developers themselves. Just kind of being in their own club. And, you know, they'll do what they do. I don't think it's that shameworthy to do, because it's like, if the game had a hundred times the player count, we wouldn't be making fun of how the developers are the only people playing it. But also, they're probably still playing it anyways. But it's also just like, hey, you know, like, who is the market for this kind of stuff? And it's a paid hero shooter with microtransactions, and I don't know if it's got a battle pass, but it's just like, oh, you know, where have I heard this one before? Well, the name Brown Water is accurate, I guess. Just, okay, I was like, oh, why did I flick that open? Oh, whoa, no, you... You cheeky fellas, you cheeky fellas. You really got me on that one. So I assume this puts me back, okay, we're back here. Did I, yeah, I was like, did we open the door on the other end? We did. It's kind of a battle between using the scuba gear and using uh, your boots on the surface. That's yeah, kind of just where I need to be, just up here. Oh, the not brown water. And the freeze thrower. Cool. Which I've had this whole time, by the way, and I've just refused to use. Oh, 
unfortunately, the AI does not see the draw distance. They're just going to go for me this whole time. So. Flickering with the, with the draw distance. It doesn't know what to do there. Okay. So, uh, so anyway, so let's discuss some games that I played this week. Uh, let's start off with a Fantasy Star for the Master System. It's a very, very old school JRPG from 1987. There it is. I was like, <laughs> where are they at? Nothing hiding in the old hidey hole. Um, but yeah, Fantasy Star for the Master System is a JRPG. If I had to describe it, I'd basically say it's just like Dragon Quest 2, but you have some first-person dungeon crawler-style dungeons. Um, it's just like Dragon Quest 2 in the sense of there's not much you can really do for your characters. They level up, they get some skills uh, or some magic, and uh, in battle you can attack and attack. And sometimes you can use magic, but you'll realize most of your characters don't have that much magic to use very often. You'll save it for the bosses. Uh, although Dragon Quest 3 doesn't really have bosses. At least this one does a little bit. So, unless you got that going for it. Okay. I'm not sure why I've opened the door, but yeah, sure. Uh, let's sneak out. Ah, check that. That's a cheeky spot for a key card. Okay, do you remember where the yellow key card goes? Was that all the way back at the beginning? Maybe. Where is it? I think it might have been at the beginning. Yeah. Okay, well, back in the water. Swim up. It's not that far away, actually. Back at the beginning of the level where I go down and we had this room which has a crack in it that no one's talking about. Whoops. Just for some health, but health is health. Back down here. Don't think there was really anything other than more trip mines in here. Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, no, nothing down there. We had to use the red key card or the blue key card to open that. Maybe it was back out there? I don't recall it being in this direction. I know I'm backtracking, I'm not too sure if I'm even going quite the right way. Yeah, no, I'm just wandering around a loop. Okay, back up here. Um, but yeah, it's uh, you can describe its gameplay just referring to other JRPGs around the time. Um, so I'd probably say... What is this, by the way? Oh. There we go, we got him. We got him. It's all good. Groovy. Do you trust the different hidey holes? Okay. Um, the one thing that makes Fantasy Star kind of stand out, I, I feel like, compared to other um, JRPGs of its time, is uh, I think the writing is actually pretty solid. I like its way of storytelling through the world. You have a lot of just like little incidental NPCs that give just these small little hints towards things that it's kind of good fun. I like it. Um, also, you have a setting where it's like you have sci-fi kinds of elements. You got lab experiments, you ride a spaceship, uh, um, you go to different planets. Uh, who needs a door? But yeah, uh, ultimately though, in gameplay wise, I mean, you got like swords and you got a gun Come weapon that, that shows up, it just kind of hits all the group of enemies. Oh uh, yeah, so random encounters, Come you just fight like one kind of enemy and sometimes they come in a group uh, and you can't target anyone in the group. You just kind of go, you attack and you <laughs> they'll just hit whatever. Um, but generally it's alright, doesn't really go anywhere that far. Uh... See, we, we got in this room, not a Bill Clinton. It is DC, it kind of makes sense to have Bill Clinton here. We, oh, we're in the Pentagon. That makes sense, it's the Pentagon. Can I hop out? Can I get out? There we go. 
Not sure if they even intended for anything out here. Oh! Oh! They did intend. I think they intended to level the end here. Hey, they... That's a... That's an encounter and a half. Okay. Enjoy, fellas. Like, I knew I would only get, like, one of them like that. Still. There we go. Alright, what level are we up to? I think this is the second last level coming up. Dread October. I've lost count, so we're just gonna keep going until we're, we're done with this whole thing. Um, this is right next to the Pentagon, by the way. This one I had... Good scale to these maps. I'm really digging this. I know a lot of people definitely said uh, this hey, is the best game, baby. of the expansions, but I love the like the way everything is, you know, like detailed out. Everything looks exactly like you want it to. We got a submarine level. Let's make some submarines. Let's, I mean, I know there's submarines in the original game, but the only thing is that maybe like some of the enemies when they hit scanning and feels a bit weird when the environment is that big and they've seen you. That's, gotta hurt. That's the only real thing. Um, but yeah, uh, the dungeons in Fantasy Star are... Oh, oh. The dungeons in Fantasy Star are very, very stuff of nightmares though. Pull out the graph paper. Uh, or just look up some walkthroughs because you're gonna need to just spend time going through most, Oh my gosh That's another one as well You're gonna need to spend time going through plotting out everything you see Where are the- well, maybe not where are the chests because you're most likely gonna open up all your chests first go But like, where are the, um, you know, the, the, the walls? Where does everything go? Uh, you're gonna have trap floors that drop you down a floor, you're gonna have stairs, and you might be going up and down, and some of the dungeons involve going up to the top floor, to the key, moving back baby. to the bottom floor, somewhere else, and then moving back up to the top floor again. Some of the levels are just like that. It's, uh, an absolute doozy, and you're gonna need to plot that all out. Um, for every single dungeon. There's about a dozen dungeons as well in the game. Um, and uh, like old school JRPGs as well, you're gonna need to do sort of, not necessarily backtracking, but like a, um, how would I put it, like, multiple trips across the same area to, uh, just because resources are scarce, you're gonna have to do just some long trips and go, okay, now you go in this direction, now you go in this direction, and so on. Uh, there's a fair bit of that going on. It's not for the, not for the faint-hearted. Um, I assume this just opens the, yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to piece together. I mean, given that you can swim, a hunch of mine is like there's probably just something on the underside of a submarine or something like that, but it doesn't scream out to me looking at it. Same with this one. Oh, it's just a little tiny hole. Then I'm gonna need a red key card. I do like me a good submarine sequence though. The claustrophobia and just like the peering around corners makes for a great shooter kind of design. Not a lot of games do it. Probably because you need to do a lot of floors above floors and uh, well you can keep it nice and cramped. What was a game I played that had a good fear, because I remember throwing grenades and then having to retry like 50 million times. No, it was 13. 13 had one of those. And it was a stealth section as well. Oh boy. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, hi there. Nice key card. Now know where to go back to, but <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, I'm hearing someone. Okay. Uh, but yeah, other than that though, uh, one thing that's very, very nice about the game is that you have five battery settings and you can freely just save between any of them at any point, including in the middle of a dungeon. You can just go, hey, I want to save here. And then that's all good. Uh, if you're going for the retro achievement set, uh, be warned, uh, it's very cruel. One, uh, there's an achievement for most of the dungeons which involves uh, wandering onto every space with a chest. I was like, see that he's even there. Wandering onto every space with a chest. Once. And then wandering to the exit. Some of these dungeons are like eight floors long. They are so horrendously long that trying to get every chest in one like session is quite absurd. Fortunately, running away from encounters isn't too bad, but you want to be that guy who runs away from all the encounters just because you're going for a retro achievement? No. Maybe. Uh, so, I think it's one to just beat. Don't worry about the achievements. Just, just have a good time going for it. Uh, the colors are also nice and vibrant. I love the master system. Uh, every time I play it, I'm like, oh. It's so just clean, and there's like, just technically way more going on than, uh, you know, an NES game. Um, I think it's just because the hardware was a fair bit more expensive as well at the time. Um, but it's nice, it's, it's a good fun system. Is that fighting going on? I'm not just sure what's up with that. Also, was it pointing out a room right here? Yeah, before I wander back. Actually, this is about to loop back around to here. Hi there. Baby. Oh my gosh, I got a cough. Best view. Oh my gosh, Vietnam. Bro, you got the country wrong. What the heck? They don't care. The bots don't care about me. They just. This is going ham. This is a real dense ship as well when you think about it. Uh, okay, so the red key card was down on the lower floor because we saw it right after the yellow key card, wherever it's hiding. Somewhere in here. We went through here, I think. Yeah, we, yeah, we went somewhere around here. Yes, there you go. Just casually in there. Okay, uh, where's the blue? Keycard wasn't outside, was it? Was it? It's worth investigating. I don't imagine it was. I don't recall there being anything outside. Yeah, I was like, that door didn't just open up on me. Mm. Nope, that's just draw distance. It's probably window dressing. This kind of area around here. You know, we sight the, the outside of the level on it, but I don't think it's anything too involved. Nah, I don't think it's out here. Alright, back to the ship! I don't suppose the other ship is involved, right? Nah, probably not. Nah, definitely not. The ship feels a little bigger on the uh, outside than the inside. Sorry, on the, on the inside than the outside. Get the, get the directions right. Alright, looking for a blue keycard spot. Maybe it makes sense it's on the top floor somewhere. That seems alright. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, let's get, let's get down to lower decks now. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, yeah, Fantasy Star, the original, this was rather, rather well put. I enjoyed it, I, I had a good time, and I hope uh, you can have a good time with it as well. Don't feel bad for using a walkthrough with it though, because it's just some things where you're like, bro, I, you do not know. You do not know until you, you, you really dive into it and just sink your hours into it, so... 
some of my time's a bit precious, so I relied on that a bit. Um, the other game I played in the week was uh, Jack and Daxter. So I mentioned earlier, I'd never played any Naughty Dog game as a kid. Uh, I'd never played any Crash game on the PS1. Uh, and uh, I felt like I had sort of missed out not being able to get around to these games. Uh, Jack and Daxter, I had seen, was highlighted as one of the finest collectathons of, uh, well, of its time, basically. It was like Rayman 2 was right before it. And people were like, yeah, Rayman 2 is a great game. This game is like up there. I'm like, is it really that good? And the answer is, I think it is. I think it is really, really good. So, Jack and Daxter is. On paper, a fairly normal collectathon, but I think the magic of it comes in execution. So it's pretty normal, where it's like, okay, you got to go around the world, you collect a hundred power cores. Uh, you also have nuke proof. I think this is the you last level. Some. Where is it? Nice, another metal detector. Come get oh, shoot it. What? Oh. <laughs> um, so not only do you have your 100 uh, power cores, but also you've got effectively your Donkey Kong 64 bananas. There are 2,000 precursor or uh, fun memories of the first Jack and Dexter. Dexter. Uh, only know the first parts of the game. We did not have a PS2 friend had. Ah. <clears throat> yeah, I think I had probably seen a demo at a game store because the title screen seemed very iconic to me. I was like, I've seen this tons of times in, in person. And it's glorious 60 FPS as well. It does dip down in some more intense parts of the game, and in particular the final boss lags out a little bit. Um, but, uh, oh, it running at 60 is like, oh, that makes the PS2 just seem like such a powerful machine in comparison. Blow it out your ass. Not getting much distance on this. Piece of cake. Um... But yeah, uh, the, um, yeah, so you get these little precursor orbs, there's 2,000 of them, and you'll probably spend, well, you, you get to spend a lot of them in, in exchange for other, uh, power cores. You get enough power cores, you can continue on to the next areas, um, and the kind of neat, real neat, interesting part about the game is that, uh, it's all built in one contiguous open world. There's a couple of times when you'll be on like a lift, and it takes its time going to the next area, but quite often you'll just have the whole way leading to another area, and they're quite short, like, you can sort of move from one area into the next without really thinking like you've just gone through a corridor, but you definitely have. You've gone through a corridor, and that's how the game walls off its levels, it, it ensures that you are funneled through one singular entry point. Uh, most of the hub worlds, uh, <laughs> uh, didn't quite realize every wall was destroyable in there, but okay. Mm. That just, oh, yeah, I, I was like, did that just change sides? Mm. I'm not going nuts. Mm. That did just happen. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, this would be a great area mm. to fight a boss, wouldn't it? Uh, but yeah, the execution is really, really where this game shines. Having the... The lack of loading screens, and also on top of that, there's no lives. You die, you just go back to some checkpoint. Either it's the very beginning of the stage, or um, somewhere along the way, and you just continue. And that's it. You just try again. Um, that means that they can sort of peak the difficulty much, much sooner than uh, typically you do. Um, okay, so we're going to need three key cards. We've got the blue, we've got the yellow that's dead fighting, and we've got the red one there. We need to get three key cards from somewhere. I had this pathway here, which I guess it's okay now. Yellow key card. Got it. Yeah. What's up with that? What's up with that? Going on there? Okay. Uh, let's go back to our key card destination. Let's pop them all in. Um, other than that, though, you know, it's it's a fairly normal. Uh, collectathon 3D platformer affair. You know, you've got your run. You can you can double jump. You can do a roll. You can do a crouch and a crouch jump. Uh, the crouch jump never shows up, by the way. I think you can get a little more height. Like it's more than a single jump, but a double jump is kind of pretty high enough. Um, there's also a couple of uh, alternate like kinds of levels. Some involving a vehicle. Um, okay, 
It's not number one, it's not number two. Must be... However, however we get back up there. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, there's one level that's entirely a vehicle section, which I thought was quite interesting, but there's a couple of shorter ones, which are basically like going from one area, one world, hub world to another, involves a long kind of corridor that you would uh, drive the, the vehicle through. This is back where I came from, right? Why... Why was there an enemy just stuck there? I don't imagine I've... done anything around here. There's just... It's just this place. Okay. That's just me wandering back to the start. Got it. <laughs> I'm going nuts. So what did that one lever activate? Oh, here we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's on top. <clears throat> oh, so close. Maybe I gotta bolt it. It's probably I uh, gotta gotta flick the switch and go real quick. And it probably had the number right next to it, so I knew exactly that this would have been number one. Or this was just walled off. Like if I look over here, I can't see it. So, all right. <laughs> I've understood the level design, guys. Don't worry. Uh, there's a little bit of backtracking involved, but not a lot. There's a couple of moments where it's like, oh, you need to activate a switch in one level and actually activate something in another level. I think Banjo-Kazooie, um, where it's pretty mild. It's like, it's only for a couple of moments and it's enough to give the, the game a little more depth, uh, than before. But you don't gain any, uh, any resources, any, like, new abilities as you go throughout the game. You basically, it's all knowledge, and just trying new things. And also on top of that, I think every level does really just try its own new mechanics and set pieces, and some that are a little more interesting than others. I think that the snowy mountain and the jungle are definitely a snowy mountain and a jungle. Like, there's not much to say about them in terms of, you know, what they are, but I really, really liked the, um, the, uh, what is it? There's a, there's a lost city level, which is good fun. I'm, I'm a big sucker for underwater levels. That one underwater level in Unreal Tournament gives me just, oh, oh, every time. Oh, I want to get up there. This feels like a very odd jump. Yeah. Well, we'll probably get out, get out of there somewhere. Not sure why there's a purple square on the map, but okay. Uh, so I've been in here. I mean, that looks like that hooks up. Fine, jetpack. No, yes. Look at that. What am I looking at here? Guess the force field would have gone off. Okay. I was gonna say, does this connect around? Jeez. I must have activated something back there. Yep, there you go. Um, yeah, other than that, you know, visually, it's like, it's, it's a little bit of early PS2. You'll definitely see some quirkiness to it. Uh, but the animation is like top notch. Characters are fluid as, it all moves at 60, which is great. Um, and it's vibrant and colorful and <clears throat> it doing it without loading screens is very admirable. Uh, you'll just look at that and you'll be like, yeah, yeah, no, I get that. I get it. Oh boy, by the way. Get the heck out of Dodge, apparently. <sighs> All of that just to get a blue key card, but you know what? I'm down for that. So I'd imagine the third key card just reveals the boss. Now you may be wondering, what, what would the boss be? Okay, there's number two, so let's wander down to number two. But yeah, no, I'd highly recommend Jack and Daxa. I'd definitely go, this is, there's a part of me that's like, when you know a game made history, and not just like, you know, you've, you've read up about it and you've seen like good hype, that's just cruel. I love it. <laughs> but like, when you know a game's made history, and then you're playing, you, you get it. You know exactly what was in that mindset at that time, and you're like, wow, that actually is pretty mind-blowing. That's another one of those examples. I, f I had that feeling with, um, 
uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 the first time I played it. Um, only, like, either last year or the year before, but, like, man, I got it. I was like, man, that's... That's why people were hyped about this. Um, also nice. Double backtracking. Love it. It's a very Doom 64 kind of ledge. Okay, I'm worried. I'm going down a hallway with not a lot of enemies. Oh, there we go. There's only one of you. <laughs> nice. Well, oh, man, you can't say that word. We put a five button combo just to make make you cry a little bit. As a fantasy star, I'd say it's a like it's a decent recommendation if you like uh, your old 80s. Oh, oh my gosh, <laughs> if you like your old eighties uh, RPGs, um, I think there's certainly better ones. Um, I don't know if around that around oh, nice. I don't know if around that time era um, there are like crazy crazy better ones, but certainly uh, from a modern perspective of uh, wow, I thought, I thought I had ammo. For any other weapon. Um, from a modern perspective, you can go, yeah, no, RPGs definitely got better. This is, this is, a uh, vintage. Oh, I'm hearing a dude somewhere. And I don't care enough to stick around, so. <laughs> We're gone. Also, uh, love the DEFCON 5. I don't know if I'm hearing him back there, or... Yeah. Since this is the last level, I guess, um... Hi there. I guess uh, it's good to just give a bit of an overview of how I felt. I felt great about this. I'm really digging the level design. It's it's a bit open and sometimes it's not the clearest where the keys go. Um, but I can't fault them for really what they're trying to accomplish with these levels. It's good fun. go that was it that was the final boss wow now you know where this is going oh boy uh and three is directly above me so, <laughs> that threw me off i tell you so you go up some stairs and now it's on a staircase that this probably clips the ceiling i don't know um okay through here oh boy Oh boy. Oh boy. It's the president. He's walled up. And now you gotta fight this guy in a much, much smaller arena than before. I don't suppose you can hit him with the, uh... With the <laughs> shrink ray, could you? Wow. Okay. You know what? Get the jetpack out. Let's just get some distance on him. That's what it's for. That's what the jetpack's for. There we go. We did it. We saved Bill Clinton. Duke kneels beside the steaming corpse of his opponent. I love the smell of charbroiled alien overlord in the morning. And that was it. Beautiful, Mwah. delish, magnifique. Uh, but yeah, no, that was Duke Down DC. It's mostly a level pack, but a very, very well done one. The levels are really, really nice and uh, inventive, and you've got a lot of great variety between them. And it's weird because you look at like the names of the other ones, and you think the DC levels wouldn't be the most interesting, but no, it works out really, really well. Um, so yeah, if you've played Duke Nukem 3D. 
and you have some way of acquiring the old version. Like from the Zoom store, not the, not Zoom, the, the telco kind of video calling software company, but like there's a different store, the Zoom store. You can indeed still buy Duke Nukem 3D with the expansions, uh, so you can still play this like that. If you own the Megaton Edition, feel sad that Randy Pitchford, for someone, re not specifically Randy, I'm singling them out. Uh, but he said in, in an interview, he's like, oh, you know, there's like terrible stuff that wouldn't fly these days um, in the expansions. And I'm like, not this one. This one deserves to be played. This one definitely deserves the mention. So highly recommend. Give it a go if, uh, if you can somewhere. And uh, with that, I would like to thank you all so very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed this or you didn't enjoy this, one of the two, uh, you can follow on Twitch, where I'll stream at 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time every Monday, uh, just like today. And if you missed parts of this, uh, the VOD will be on YouTube uh, real soon, so that's all good. Thank you, Blob, for joining in, for uh, chatting, and uh, yeah, no, thank you, uh, thank you as well, uh, Agatosh, from earlier. I uh, appreciate it. I hope you catch around for other streams. Um, and, uh, but yeah, no, yeah, you can catch on YouTube, and if you miss this, or any other stream, they're all on YouTube, don't worry. Um, yeah, that's about it. Other than that, yeah, you can follow some ramblings I, I made on the Fetty. Oh, that was a real, yeah, I, I had one, uh, someone tweeted, like, a bit of a heinous clip where he compared, he was reviewing God Hand or talking about God Hand, and he basically said it's like if Doom 2016 and Dark Souls had a baby, but this game came out first. I'd say it's one of the first games that incorporated the Dark Souls hard but fair mentality. I'm like, oh boy. So I got a, I got a few words on that. Follow me on the Fetty. I said some stuff on it, and I don't think I really have that much time to reiterate on it. So <laughs> follow me there for for some stuff. Other than that, take care. Eat your greens. Don't stay up too late. And uh. Save the president, I guess? That's how we saved Bill Clinton in the end, so. Peace, everyone. Have a good one.